Welcome to the Out of Spec Motoring YouTube channel. You're actually joining us in our podcast studio, of which we have many of these things to have cool guests come and talk about their electric vehicle road trip stories and the future of transportation in general. So please stay tuned for that, launching in a few weeks. <laughs> Let's get into the charging cost on the Kona electric road trip that I did. Now the trip that I had done was from Stamford, Connecticut to Marco Island and then back to Stamford. However, all of my charging data that we're going to talk about today was just for the first half of the trip on the way from Stamford to Marco Island. I did some weird out of the way stuff on the way back. So it doesn't really make sense to include that all in this video. Let's just talk about the one way. 1400 miles pretty much straight through and we can extrapolate the data that we took on the way down to assume charging costs on the way back which would pretty much just be times two it's pretty much the same route both ways no big elevation changes on the east coast so let's get into it for those that just want to know the total cost of the trip it was 83 dollars and 28 cents one way again this is 1400 miles and um really not bad i think uh it was ex on the expensive side, especially when compared to even some gasoline cars and supercharger cost. But for the uh, time that I did, no big deal. But when you compare that number to uh, a typical gas car, like a BMW X1, which costs a little bit less than the Kona actually, and uh, requires premium fuel, that was $143.50 to do that trip. When you compare it to a Prius, which is a hybrid, of course, but for the most part, you're using the engine on the highway, gets 50 miles per gallon highway, and with an average regular fuel cost of this week being about $2.69 a gallon, that would be $75.32 to complete the same trip, which... Um, is less by about $8 than the Kona Electric. The total time I spent charging was three and a half hours on this trip, rounded plus or minus. You know, that doesn't include time that spent finding the chargers off the off ramp. Most chargers that I stopped at were, again, within two minutes, one direction. So let's just say an average of five minute downtime for seven or eight charging stops, not that big of a deal, but the, the three and a half hours is significantly longer than it would have taken in a Tesla. Now I've also done this trip in the Model 3 uh, many times actually. We are in between them. My parents live in Marco Island and Stamford. Uh, they're in between. So we do a lot of driving because we take our dogs with us most of the time. And uh, a couple of these stops I had to sort of guesstimate some data on, but were plus or minus a few dollars. Taking the Model 3 on that trip would be about $63.83. This is assuming the most expensive tiered charging consistently because very rarely are you going to be sitting at a supercharger with pulling less than 60 kilowatt, which is when you dip down to that cheaper price. But also, I mean, this is just a rough guesstimate, but I would say the supercharger numbers are going to be less expensive than driving a typical EV on an Electrify America EV go public charging network at this point. Now the benefit with Tesla is with the referral program, again, thank you for everyone who's used my referral code, it doesn't cost us anything to get around. So we drove 6,000 miles in May, we're up to almost 5,000 miles in June now, and uh, it has cost me $0 to drive the Tesla around, so thank you very much for everyone who's used the code. So we've talked about cost, but we did not talk about the exact kilowatt hour cost. Now all of these stations charge by the minute, which, you know, of course, I have an issue with almost everyone does, but there are regulations that are put in place by municipalities and any given region that pretty much force resellers of electricity, like charging companies to charge by the minute instead of by kilowatt hour. So it's a really good deal if you can charge towards the top end of your tiered minute rate. So for example, Electrify America has three tiers. The first tier is up to 75 kilowatt. The second tier is from 75 to 150 kilowatt. And then the last tier is north of 150. So the, the, the cost at most Electrify America stations more than doubles from tier one to tier two. The Kona can theoretically pull from what I've seen a maximum of 76 kilowatt. Now that's at the car. So let's just say 77 kilowatt at the charger itself. So it just tips us over into tier two. 
uh, which is the worst deal because you're pulling at the bottom of that tier. Now, the Electrify America chargers don't always agree with the Kona when it should be in tier one or tier two. And let me back up for a second. Electrify America charges tiered numbers for the entire charging session. So that means if the car can pull 76 kilowatts at one point for a minuscule second, the whole charging session by minute is charged more than double of what it should be. Now, what Tesla does, I think, is really smart because they charge you when you're pulling over 60 kilowatt a certain rate, and then it cuts in half when you're pulling under 60 kilowatt. So it's it moves around based on what you're pulling. So like, that's cool. But Electrify America doesn't do that. And it blows if you get into the second charging tier. Now, let's talk about when the Kona goes into these tiers, because the Kona really, the whole way down there, never pulled more than 75 kilowatt. I saw a peak of 73. When I saw 76 kilowatts, it was on the return trip. 40% of my charging station stops, somewhere around there, were tier one. The rest were tier two, which means I was charged more than double what I should have been charged. So that $83 total cost of charging should be more like $50 or $40 instead of 83. Electrify America and Hyundai are working on it. They're both aware of the issue. We've been sort of talking to them and we're, we're very hopeful that software will fix the issue. So our price per kilowatt hour ranged during like peak tier one speeds from 14 cents per kilowatt hour, which is dirt cheap for DC fast charging, especially when you're pulling 50, 60, almost 70 kilowatts. That's amazing. All the way to 49 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, for a charging session. Again, this is averaged out for each session that I had. So that's a huge spread, 14 to 49 cents per kilowatt hour. This is how big of a difference these tier one, tier two speeds have on a car that can pull right in the middle of tier one, tier two. It's a, it's a, it's a big problem and I really hope they work on it. Part of the theory of shooting this video that didn't really come through when I edited it together, that storyline kind of fell apart, was I was taking the Kona, a car I've never driven before, never spent time with. I've just really had Tesla's road trip Tesla's. I road trip my I3 back in the day, but that was just a silly fun thing. And the plan was just to get in an electric car that's a non-Tesla and drive it straight to Florida and back and just see what happens. If I was going to run out, I didn't care. I was going to call a tow truck. Like I was prepared to fail, but I made it. So even though I had all these connection faulting issues and we can get into a whole video on, on what the faults are and how it all happened. So I made it on this big road trip that was incredible. It's away from the supercharger network. You know, you could do this trip before, but it would have required an overnight stop somewhere other than of course, Raleigh. You, I mean, I didn't have to stop here, but I just wanted to come home and, and you could just do this on DC fast chargers all the way around with the electrify America network. So I'm really pleased that the network is improving. I think all of these weird charging uh, in terms of cost issues, as well as faulting issues, will be sorted over the next four, five, six months and be ready for prime time probably in 2020 when we start seeing a lot more EVs roll out. So thank you for watching a quick recap video of the charging of the trip. A lot of you have asked for this video. We appreciate all the comments and the support, the likes, the subscribes. It, it means so much that we're able to sort of build this educational platform, whatever this is going to be based off of the future of transportation. The podcast is cool. If you have done something cool with an electric car and want to come talk about it or just love EVs and you're in the North Carolina Raleigh area, please come to our studio. We'd love to have you and just chat. That's really all the podcast is going to be is, you know, three, four, five people just geeking out about cars, electric cars, burnouts, donuts, you know, whatever gets us excited. It'll just be a fun conversational piece. And please remember to subscribe and keep an eye out for some future videos. We got some fun stuff coming up. Enjoy. Have a great day.